Hair Love by Matthew A. Cherry, illustrated by Vashti Harrison. Hair Love. My name is Zuri, and I have hair that has a mind of its own. It kinks, coils, and curls every which way. Daddy tells me it's beautiful. That makes me proud. I love that my hair lets me be me. In funky braids with beads, I am a princess. And when my hair is in two puffs, I am above the clouds like a superhero. My hair even does magic tricks. One day, Rocky and I were playing outside when along came the rain. From large to small, it went presto, just like that. There is nothing my hair can't do. Today, I woke up extra early all by myself. I was too excited to sleep. It's a big day. Daddy was still sleeping.
Now, the next story is about a little boy who is an artist. And people make art in a lot of places. This little boy, Milo, sometimes he makes art while he's on the bus. Milo imagines the world. And it's signed by the people who made the book. Words by Matt de la Pena, pictures by Christian Robinson. What begins as a slow, distant glow grows and grows into a tired train that clatters down the tracks. A cool rush of wind quiets into a screech of steel. And when the doors slide open, Milo slips aboard. The train bucks back into motion and he and his sister squeeze into the bench seats. The whiskered man behind Milo has the face of concentration. A businessman has a blank, lonely face. The wedding-dressed woman near the far door has a face made of light. While the dog, peeking out of her handbag, has no face at all, just a long, lolling tongue. These monthly Sunday subway rides are never ending. And usually Milo is shook up like soda. Excitement stacked on top of worry, on top of confusion, on top of love. And to keep himself from bursting, he studies the faces around him and makes pictures of their lives. At a downtown local stop, the whiskered man folds up his crossword and hurries off the train. Milo imagines him trudging through brown mounds of slush. It's a five-foot climb to his cluttered apartment, and he is greeted by mewling cats and burrowing rats. Parakeets tweet songs of longing as the man sips tepid soup hunched over a game of solitaire. Late that night, the door to the parakeet cage mysteriously falls open, and the cats gather on the sill and watch the birds fly. Free, free above the city. Milo tugs at his sister's sleeve and holds up his picture. But even when she turns to look, he can tell she doesn't see. She's a shook up soda can too. A boy in a suit boards the train with his dad. His hair is perfect. And there's not a single scuff on his bright white Nikes. Milo imagines the chop, chop, chop of the horse-drawn carriage that will carry him to this castle. He imagines the clink, clink, clink of the guard slowly lowering the drawbridge. And across the human moat, the human-made moat, the boy is met by a butler, two maids, and a gourmet chef offering crust-free sandwich squares. Milo flips to a fresh page at a bustling midtown stop where the wedding dressed woman strides off the train. A band of street performers launches into, here comes the bride. And everyone on the platform stops and cheers. Milo imagines the grand cathedral ceremony where the couple will be pronounced husband and wife and he imagines the groom whisking his new bride into a waiting hot air balloon where the pilot loads them in with blankets and blasts the heat and up, 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 they go, hand in hand, beyond the concrete walls of the city into the infinite blue. Milo holds his picture, but his sister shoos him away. Can't you see I'm playing my game, she says. He watches her thumbs bouncing around the screen, the smudged screen, and then turns back to the boy in the suit. 
They look at each other and lock eyes for a few long seconds and suddenly it feels like the walls are closing in on Milo. The spell is broken when a crew of breakers bounce into the train announcing, you ready for a show? Several curious faces look up at the beat drops and now the girls are walking up walls. They're whirling around poles. They're back flipping over shopping bags. And when the train pulls into the next stop, they collect a few dollars and scramble for another door. Well, Milo imagines them going from train to train, doing their act as everyone watches. Even after the performances are over, their faces still follow their every move. And when they walk down the electronics aside, they go down the electronics aisle at the department store. And when they come into the fancy neighborhood, Milo doesn't really like this picture. So he puts it away. He puts away his pad and turns to his reflection in the window. What do people imagine about his face? Can they see him? Can they see him reciting his volcano poem to the class? Can they hear his mom's soothing voice reading a bedtime book over the phone? Can they smell the chili Colorado bubbling in a pot in his auntie's apartment near the cemetery? Butterflies flood Milo's stomach. It's finally their stop, and he follows his sister onto the cold station platform and up the stairs. Above the ground, he's surprised to see the boy in the suit a few paces ahead. He's even more surprised when the boy joins the long line to pass through the metal detector. Milo's sister suddenly bends to give him a hug. I didn't mean to snap at you, she says. She takes his hand, adding, Do you have your picture ready? He nods, feeling the warmth of her fingers. And they slowly shuffle forward. Milo studies the boy in the suit and his dad rubbing his thin shoulders. And a thought occurs to him. Maybe you can't really know anyone just by looking at their face. Milo tries to reimagine all the pictures he made in the train. Maybe he could have done it like this instead. Or this. Or this. Milo's chest fills with excitement when he spots his mom through the crowd. His sister rushes to give her a hug before pulling Milo in too. And it's this tight tangle of the familiar arms. There he feels most alive. When they separate, Milo flips through his pad and he finds the right picture. I made this for you, he says, holding it up. And he watches the smile. He watches the smile as it spreads across his mom's face. Milo Imagines the World by Matt de la Pena.